Am I muted or unmuted? Am I good? Hey, Coach. Hey, uh, we noticed you had uh, Eric Thomas moved over to tight end today. I think he was recruited as a defensive end and listed as a linebacker. Now he's a tight end. Is that just, uh, I guess, with, with Hudson being a little out today? No, I think I think we're we're trying to find another physical tight end, and Eric's not necessarily um, at this point, you know, um, uh, high on the depth chart at linebacker. He certainly can work his way up, but uh, we thought that his opportunity to play faster uh, would be maybe possibly at tight end. So we're going to look at him there. Nate. Sam, just one of how's the, the offense going installation and pads. And two of what I was asking really was the last bunch couldn't try to run a up tempo offense with his personnel and couldn't. What's your confidence level that you all can do it? Well, if I wasn't confident we could do it, we wouldn't do it, uh, number one. But uh, um, our, uh, we probably, I don't know, we probably got 85, 90% of our offense in, uh, to be honest with you. And uh, uh, we're not up tempo all the time, you know. Uh, uh, we talk about a fast offense because when we want to play at that speed, we have to be ready to play at that speed. So uh, do we practice it? Uh, we obviously do, but we're cer certainly not up tempo all the time. Bob? Uh, hey, hey, Sam, how you doing? Hey, Bob. Um, how's the offensive line doing overall, would you say, since you guys got in pads? And how, how's Ricky doing at center? Um, kind of how's he splitting his work up there? And just, you know, what, what your thoughts are on the line overall? I was, I was really pleased with the line today. I thought they had a, a, a nice practice. Uh, you know, um, we have to strain. We have to be mentally tough as a team. We have to get tougher that way. Uh, but we have to strain on our blocks. And uh, I thought they did uh, more today than what I've seen. Um, uh, we're still trying to find the right pieces. And as we find the best five we have, we're trying to find the best number six, number seven, number eight. Uh, we're still, we're a lot closer than what we were uh, a week ago, but uh, I like Ricky at center. I think he's doing a really nice job. And him and Ty are having a nice battle in there for the center spot. And we're also working Ricky at some guard. We're also working Ty at some guard. So I'm, I'm pleased to where we are right now uh, up front on the O-line. And I'm, I'm enjoying watching them be a little more physical um, the last two days and than, uh, than what uh, – they were previously. Nikki? Hey, Coach. What did you think of the NCAA granting an extra season of eligibility for these guys and the implications that that could have for your roster? Or is it kind of like, you know, the more the merrier as long as you can cover those scholarships? Well, we have some seniors on our team. We're going to try to get to stay, I'll tell you that. Um, you know, the NCAA uh, is thinking about uh, the kids first and, you know, the scholarship limits and the finances that it may cost. Uh, I'm sure they're concerned about that, but they're doing the right thing, thinking about the kids first. And, and uh, I'm not positive, Nikki, what that's going to mean as far as are we still going to need to stay at 85 or are we going to, you know, get a few more, uh, how institutions are going to pay for that, those things of that nature. But I think it's a good deal. I mean, if 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 they opt out and they're able to come back, and you know, of course, they they get it whether they do or not. Now, you know, um, uh, I think it's probably a good deal, and it'll be, give a chance for some guys that may not be high on the draft board the opportunity to come back and and play again. And with the shortened season, I th I'm sure they did that for everybody. You know, for some of the teams that aren't playing too. You know, so I think it's fair for everyone. Thank you. Jason. Hey, Coach, just what's it been like the last two days being back over there with the offensive line and, and kind of getting some, you know, good work with those guys and kind of seeing where they're at right now? Well, I mean, uh, we were able, NCAA let us um, put Joe Henry on the field and 
And of course, Ryan Yurichek is a GA over there. And I'm really not doing too much. You know, they, 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 they're coaching the line and, and those things. And I think Coach Davis will be back in the next couple of days, maybe, maybe a week at the, at the longest. But um, they, those two kids are doing a really nice job over there. I'm over there helping them out a little bit, but um, they're doing a nice job of, of uh, meeting with them and, and coaching them. I, I think, you know, if I took them completely over, uh, I don't want to lose any of the trust that Coach Davis had with them. And, and so there, I'm just kind of a helper over there. I, you know, Coach Davis is their line coach, and I'm certainly I, I'm not going to not coach a line, whether Coach Davis is here or not. Uh, but I, I don't want to lose the trust that he's had with the room by saying something differently than what he does. Uh, so I'm really just coaching a lot of technique type things. Um. Hey, Sam, I got kind of a long winded question here, but as first practices and pads go, can you enlighten us on how much full tackling you did? Who, who showed up? What, what you thought of execution and uh, ball security and all those things? I thought our ball security was good. Uh, we, only, we only had 18. We had some drills that were live tackling, but uh, team-wise, we only had 18 plays of live uh, tackling today. Um, the rest of it was stud up. Um, and I, you know, I, it's hard to single out guys because um, I don't want to divide the team. But I, I thought everybody played awful hard today. And I, again, I think this was our best practice as a as a football team that we had. So I've had to like the physicality of the practice because that's what we're preaching about toughness, about strain, about mental toughness. I thought guys tried to fight through practice a little bit more than what they had in the past. Great shot. Coach, there, there are some players that have entered the portal and some schools that aren't playing this season won't have a season. Have you thought about looking at any of them for this season or are you not paying attention to the portal at all? Or, or could you even get some of those players? You know, it's a really fine line. It really is, you know, where at right now you would take a transfer. Um, it would have to be a major need on your program. And, you know, the bottom line is these kids have been working out together for a long time, ever since we got here. And, and you know, if you bring a grad transfer in and you bring him in and he's here in June and, you know, or he's here in this January and he's part of the team, it's a little bit different than bringing a guy in right now. So obviously if we had the scholarship number to do it, and if he was a great player, we'd obviously we'd be uh, we wouldn't be very smart not to look at him. But uh, there's a fine line in there. You have to be right, and he has to really come in and be the right kind of person, and somebody that's going to fit into the football team. Ty. Coach, you mentioned if you had a need on the roster. Currently, as you see it, is there a particular position group that, that might actually be a question that you guys have this upcoming season? Well, we'd always take a great player, you know, probably at any position. Uh, certainly, we're I, I feel like we're a little thin at tight end. So, you know, we obviously moved Derek over there. But um, uh, I, it, had, it probably had to be somebody with – a skill player, somebody that's dynamic with the ball in her hand for us to do that. And, and there might be another spot or two, you know, but, but, uh, you know, anytime you say who you'd like to bring in and you're offending the guys on your team and I'm, I'm not going to do that. Otis. Coach, uh, how would, how is Zach Williams looked? I mean, he's a kid that played some last year's true freshman kind of, in the mix our defensive end, how's he looked? Yeah, he looks good. He's quick, quick twitched, uh, done a nice job in there. Uh, got some pass rush ability, uh, really good kid, strains hard, um, getting better every day. I, I, I like him. You know, obviously we'd like to put some weight on him, uh, but uh, as far as his effort and, and what he brings to our football team, as far as character, um, we really enjoyed uh, working with him. Neighbors. 
So, Coach, uh, so you mentioned about mental toughness and how you're really trying to preach that to your team. Uh, you know, a lot of coaches do that a lot of different ways. So what's kind of been the main strategy that you as a coaching staff has had as far as making sure that you guys are mentally tough and working on that mental toughness to make you better as the season comes along? Well, uh, first of all, I believe you have to be mentally tough before you can be physically tough. And so you have to work on them, in my opinion, in that order. And the bottom line is mental toughness you see. In other words, I, I took a shot. Am I going to get up? Am I going to go back to the sideline? Am I going to go to the trainer? Uh, or am I going to go play another play? Uh, and if I'm a little tweaked up, there's certainly – if they're injured, we don't want them out there. Um, but if they can practice, we want them to fight through the practice and let us, you know, decide whether they can, you know, go full speed or can they go in individual drills and things of that nature before, you know, it was if you're out, you're just out and you don't practice individual, you don't practice one-on-one -on -one pass pro, you don't practice back paddling. And we're trying to mentally get them out there to, to okay, at the individual, can you go? Well, the answer is yes, the answer is no. We've had more yes than no. And, um, you know, today we didn't have a whole lot of wide receivers out there. I thought they fought through the practice. I made a special uh, uh, announcement after practice about those guys because they fought through it. I didn't know that they, there was not as many wide outs as normal out there uh, once the practice got going. So. I, you know, we talk about it all the time. When we say something, we expect it. The, the kids expect us to be truthful with them. And whatever we ask them to do, we expect them to do it. And certainly whatever we tell them, they expect us to do it. All right, we'll start our second round through here. Uh, if you've got questions, uh, hit me up in the chat if you hadn't already. Trey Biddy. Yeah, Coach. Um... <clears throat> Marcus Henderson, I think a lot of us are thinking guard for him, and uh, we've seen him working with the second group at left tackle the last couple of days. What have you liked out of uh, out of Marcus to, I guess, elevate him? First of all, I think he's really smart, Trey. Uh, he's learned the offense uh, awfully fast. Another thing, he's, he has outstanding feet. He likes to compete. Um, you know, he's ahead of a lot of uh, freshmen that I've coached in my past as far as the mental game of it the strain, the competition part of it. He likes competition. Uh, he's just a really good athlete uh, that can play. And therefore, I believe if you, if you have a great athlete, you want to start him outside in. And so we certainly want to look at him at left tackle to see how he's doing there. We moved him uh, to right tackle at some point. I thought it set him back a little bit, uh, I think. You know, when you're thinking all the time, you're not necessarily moving full speed. So we moved him back to his home place uh, that he had started here, learning from the beginning. And he's really, he's really, last two days, he's, he's, uh, he's not necessarily playing like a freshman. He's doing a really nice job. Hutch. Yeah, Coach, I was wondering what your assessment is of the quarterbacks like Felipe and the other guys. And, and where, are, where do you stand on the process of maybe uh, naming a starter? Well, we might name a starter. We may already have, but we just haven't told nobody. Um, I mean, we got certain people playing with the ones and certain people playing with the twos. And to be honest with you, we haven't we haven't switched that. So um, I don't know if I'm gonna make a public announcement of who's gonna be our quarterback, but I might. But I, our team knows. Um, that's all that really I'm concerned about. Nikki. Uh, Coach, who has like made you go wow in practice? Like who has consistently made big plays through these five days? John Marshall, Julius Coates. Um, Traylon Burks, um, Cunningham at tackle. And Dorian Gerald has certainly flashed. Uh, and uh, Xavier Kelly has been a, uh, 
Uh, they're just big dudes. They're hard to move, and they can rush the passer. And, uh, you know, I'm not for sure you're going to have to take them out of the game in third down. I don't know that I would. Barry's going to make that decision. But uh, them guys are hard to block. And so those guys have. Uh, Jerry Jacobs had a wonderful practice today. He was all over the field. And uh, uh, certainly Mo Brown's been been a really good, a consistent player. So those are the guys, you know, I hate to name, you know, all the whole team that I think's doing good, but those are guys just right off the top of my head that uh, come to mind. Thank you. Um. Oh, hey, Sam. So the day you got hired, you said that you got a bunch of texts from the, like the O-line crew, all the coaches out there. And so I'm wondering, um, do you feel like kind of you're representing the guys this season? And also, do O-line coaches face a, a more uphill battle, do you think, to get head coaching jobs? Is that, is that a real thing? I think, <clears throat> number one, in all honesty, I just want to do a good job for the University of Arkansas. Um, would I like old line coaches to have opportunities? Do I think there's guys out there that are worthy of head coaching jobs? Of course. Um, but my main concern is I just want to be, do the best damn job I can for the University of Arkansas. And um, uh, your other question was, um, what was the last one? Yeah, it's something about. Well, it's just that, do you feel like O-line coaches face an uphill job? And, and what is it yeah, maybe? You know, it's, it's a coordinator world, you know. It's, it's, you know, coordinator. But the bottom line is a coordinator, you know, he's going to be privy. He's going to know things about every place. But he's probably going to have his expertise at the quarterback spot, the throwing game, you know, things of that nature. The old line coach is going to have expertise expertise at the protection game, at the run game, all those type of things. Uh, the bottom line is, can you get up in a group of people and make them believe that you're the right hire for the job? And coordinators have had that opportunity every day in their unit meetings, and that, so they're probably a little bit more uh, better prepared for things of this nature. Uh, that we're talking about right now than possibly a guy that all he does sit around and talk to big old linemen all the time. So I think they have an advantage there. And certainly if their offense has numbers, uh, it could be because they got a great old line. It could be because they're great coordinators. Who knows? But right now that's what's going on. The coordinators are getting the jobs. And yes, would I like to do well for O line coach? Yes, but the main reason is because I was hired at Arkansas will do a job, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, Mason, nice. if it's okay, I had, I had one question on offense, one on defense. How's Jones looking at guard, and um, how many guys are are competing for those starting jobs? And then you, you brought up Coates. I was wondering specifically what's he doing that's standing out to you? Well, he's making all kinds of plays. I mean, we can't hardly block the guy. And so that's part of it. And then you talked about linemen. There's probably, to be honest with you, there's probably about eight, maybe nine guys in there that are uh, seriously um, ha have an opportunity to start for us. And we probably started eight or well, I know we have eight. We probably started nine different units in there. Uh, maybe just a piece here, a piece there. But um, we've probably had nine different looks in there. Of course, we've two spotted a bunch of practice. And so with that happening, when you only have maybe 16 or 17 old linemen, they have to play different positions, which allows you to see them at that. Now, as we get closer to the season, we're going to cut that out. You know, we're going to make sure that we have them uh, understanding the guy that definitely going to play next to them. But it has been advantageous for us just to find out who can play and possibly can he play left guard, can he play center. Feel good about the center spot. I think we have three to make four guys that can play center for us. So, you know, obviously you can't function if you can't snap it. So uh, I'm proud about that part of it as well. All right, we got time for two or three more. Ty. 
Yeah, Coach, you just mentioned that your main concern is making sure that you do a damn good job here. I know that U of A put out that video that you want to make this state proud. Have you talked to fans about how important and how much they like you genuinely wanting to be the head coach at Arkansas? Say it again. You kept the very last part. Uh, just have you have you heard from fran- from fans how much they appreciate you wanting to be not just an SEC head coach, not just a Division One head coach, but the head coach in Arkansas? Well, uh, you know the COVID world. <laughs> you, you know I haven't uh, talked to many people personally. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, I'll get some texts and and some things of that nature, but. Um, I can feel the passion for the program and the passion of, of how much they, that the Arkansas fans want this program to be respectable and be talked about in a respectable way. And uh, is there pressure with that? No, probably, but I don't know how you put pressure on a guy that puts pressure on himself. You know what I mean? So. I, you know, I love this place, and, and, I, and I want it to be what it should be, and it's going to take a lot of work. But I'll tell you this, my friend, I'm surrounded with some great coaches, and, uh, and our players are playing hard. And as long as they'll do that, we, we're going to improve. And, but to answer your question, I, I, you know, you can feel the passion of the, you know, of the Razorback fans. They want, they want some respect, and, uh, and certainly we're going to try to give it to them. All right, Trey Biddy, wrap us up. Yeah, Coach, I was curious about with the blanket waiver, did that, like, change your thoughts on how you will deal with freshmen instead of, like, keeping them down to four games if you want to be able to redshirt them? But, like, maybe Malik is a guy that can help you run in the ball in some situations or Dominic Johnson turns into a goal line back. Do you give any thoughts of that? You know – uh, used to, Trey, I was concerned about redshirting guys and developed guys and all that, but I've had so many guys leave in three years, you know, that um, I think we're going to err on the, on the side of playing them, you know, get them out there, play them. Obviously, there'll be those three or four guys that then once you get to that for in a normal year, once you get to that four game, you're going, hey, you know, but um, I'm going to err on if I'm halfway close as a young guy to a guy that's a little bit older, I'm going to err on playing the young guy because I think he'll pass the older guy. We, we know what he's been able to do. And of course, we don't know that necessarily right now about our own team, but we will in the future. But I'm kind of the guy that wants to play whoever I think can help us regardless of their age and so I don't know if it'll really make a big difference or not, to be honest with you. All right, Psych. We're gonna go with Nate Allen for the last one. Sam, just as the first day in pads with the offensive line, just how is their stamina of the guys you've gotten bigger and everything? Just how did they handle it their first day in pads? I tell you, I didn't like our transition on and off the field today, to be honest with you. And we talked about it after after practice. During the plays, I thought we were going extremely hard. I, I, I enjoyed watching them practice. But the transition on and off the field was slow. So to me, if I'm running, I need to run to get in shape. So a jog off the field, to me, is I'm not benefiting why I'm out to practice. I need to run off the field so I can use that as conditioning as well. And uh, But I did think they played awful hard between the whistles. But I think for that extra conditioning, we can get it done during practice if we'll get on and off the field a little bit better. All right, let's wrap this up. Thanks, Thanks Coach Bennett.